In the second section of the mental status examination, we will learn about thought process. My name is Tom Field, and I produced and narrated this training series. Let's look at the overview. We will learn via a scaffolding process. In this section, we will learn about thought process and review affect and mood. In the next section, we will learn about memory and review affect and mood and thought process. In each section, there are guided practice activities. At the end of the eight sections, there is an end of training test. I encourage you to follow the handout as we progress. You can use scrap paper for guided practice if you'd like. There's also a sheet available for this. And as we view the video case studies, there are going to be times, occasions um, during guided practice when it's not going to be completely clear whether the client is exhibiting one aspect or element of the mental status examination. And in those occasions, it's okay to indicate unable to assess. The definition of thought process is how a person makes sense of the world and makes connections between content. Thought process has three elements, form of thought, attention, and speed of thought. The last two are going to be grouped together for this training. We'll look at form of thought first. Form of thought exists on a continuum beginning at logical and ending with flight of ideas. Logical is considered normal or typical and flight of ideas is considered abnormal or atypical. And as we progress from logical to circumstantial to tangential to loose associations and finally to flight of ideas, the client's connections made between content becomes less strong, uh, less apparent. In addition, as we go through form of thought, it's important to remember that thought process in, process in general manifests in the content of the client's speech. So we often assess a client's thought process based on their verbal content. Logical form of thought is described as clear, direct connections made between content. One idea flows directly into another. After my mom left me that message, I thought, you know, I, I should call her and just give her a piece of my mind. But, but then I started thinking and, you know, she, she's just so stubborn and I, I just don't think anything I say is going to make a difference. So, um, you know, there, there's just no point in putting myself through that. I mean, she's, she's not going to change. So really the only thing I have control over is how I respond to her. In this example, if we listen closely to the client's verbal content, we will see that clear direct connections are made between one idea and another. The client begins by describing how she was going to call her mother, then started thinking that anything she said was not going to make a difference, that her mother was not going to change and that the only thing she has control over is how she responds to her mother. You can see here there is a logical flow of ideas. Connections are made directly between content. This is known as a logical form of thought. Circumstantial form of thought is described as digressions to unnecessary details in thought and speech before communicating the central idea. Let's watch an example. Well, I guess I should tell you how I got fired from my job last week. Um, you know, I went in last Monday and, um, you know, when I first came in, I saw my, my friend Luann sitting there and just, she had this kind of like daydreamy look on her face that she gets when she's like totally like not paying attention to her work. And, um, you know, we, we go back quite a ways, but, um, but anyway, so like we had some like filing to do that morning, so we went back in the file room and we were kind of taking our time and and um, we were talking about like like both of us like totally watched The Walking Dead 
and the night before was like the mid-season premiere so like we've been like waiting for that show to come back on since like December so you know like you know like we're, we're doing our work and whatever but like we're totally talking about that show because you know you you totally like find out about like what happened like with Michonne and like that she had like this kid and like a boyfriend and stuff that died and you know she's having all this like drama about whether she should still be part of the group or not and then you've got all this stuff with Rick and Carl and I can't believe Carl ate 110 ounces of chocolate pudding I mean I know it's like the apocalypse and they don't like have pudding anymore but it's just kind of totally like gross I mean you'd think he'd get diabetes or something and I mean you don't want that you're not gonna be able to like run from zombies if you're having like I don't know like some kind of like blood sugar problem or whatever um you know so so we were like totally talking about that and we talked about the whole episode and like we were like totally pissed that Daryl wasn't in the episode because like let's be honest he's like the hottest person on the show and that's like you know and, and plus like you know he's just like you know shooting zombies and stuff and it's just really cool so, so like we were like doing our filing and whatever and then um, I got called into the office and it turns out that like um, the boss figured out that I spend about 75% of my day on like zombie blogs and you know instead of doing my work. So um, he ended up letting me go and that's kind of that. Here the client takes a large detour before getting to the central point. She's talking about why she was fired, and that's really what the what we want to get to. But the client uh, kind of derails and starts to talk about the Walking Dead episode and, uh, and her interest in that show. This uh, detour is somewhat connected to the central idea in that her boss let her go for spending work time trawling through zombie blogs, and for those not familiar, The Walking Dead is a television show about survivors of a zombie apocalypse. And so there is some connection made to the central idea here, but the detour kind of detracts us, brings us away from the central idea before eventually returning. With a circumstantial form of thought, eventually the central idea is communicated, but there's a detour made before then. Tangential form of thought is described as oblique digressive and irrelevant speech. The central idea is not communicated with tangential thought in comparison with circumstantial thought. Here's an example. So, like I said, I was really hoping to hear from my daughter. I haven't heard from her in over a year. And um, I was uh, going to call her on the cell phone. I have AT&T. Um, and actually, you know, I've not really been very happy with AT&T. And I was thinking about calling AT&T and really getting into some conversation with them about what kind of plans I could do. Because I've heard there's a lot of different plans out there that might be better. So that's something I think I might do. In this example, the client begins with describing how they want to call their daughter on a cell phone. And soon their verbal content takes a detour to talk about AT&T and wanting to change their cell phone plan or at least explore their options. Unlike circumstantial form of thought, the client does not return to the main topic of wanting to talk to their daughter. They conclude with uh, the discussion around the cell phone plan. And so tangential form of thought is a detour or digression from the central idea and the central idea is never fully communicated or expressed. Loose associations are described as little or vague connection made between concepts. This is uh, familiar to some, uh, some uh, viewers, the idea of rabbit holing. It's the idea that there, there are these t continuous tangential links made that never eventually get to the central idea. This can be a symptom of schizophrenia. Let's watch an example. And like I said, I lost my job. They caught me drinking on shift. And uh, I can go for a drink right now. I think my favorite drink is probably scotch. 
I drink it a lot. I usually have a couple of drinks when I go home. I go home and then I watch Late Night with Jimmy Fallon. I have a couple of drinks when I'm watching Jimmy Fallon. That guy's funny. He's not as good as Jay Leno, though. Jay Leno, uh, that guy's a legend. Seeing his chin? It's ridiculous. I don't have a chin like that. I never really liked my chin. My mom used to tell me that I had a kid's chin. I thought that was kind of funny. My mom was always like that, though. She always used to say stuff that was sort of off-color. In this example, the client continuously makes tangential connections and rabbit holes in a way um, and doesn't return to the central focus of the discussion. They begin with talking about how they lost their job for drinking on shift and never return to that. Instead, they now, then talk about how they could go for a drink right now, how their favorite drink is scotch, how they usually have a couple of drinks when they get home while watching Late Night with Jimmy Fallon, then there's a comparison made to Jay Leno and his, his chin, and how his mother used to tell him that he had a kid's chin, and his mother used to say stuff that was off color. And so you can see here that there are some connections made between content, but it just moves the conversation further and further away from the central idea. This is known as loose associations. Flight of ideas are described as multiple thoughts and ideas generated spontaneously without obvious connection. This often occurs in manic states and is associated with bipolar disorder. Let's watch an example. Yeah, and I was thinking about my mom was, my mom was always a little weird like that. I'm not really sure what she, um, she always, I don't know, she, you know, that's what I was thinking about that the other day, because she was in the kitchen this one day, and she was she was looking out the window, and there were all these little red glass vases, which um, is, uh, you know, I really need to get a car. If, if I had a car, I'd be able to make it easier to, uh, I'd be able to make it to counseling, and, um, you know, and that, that's another thing, too. I was actually thinking about asking you a question about something. I wasn't really sure whether or not I should talk to you about it. I've never, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I can't really talk about something, and then other times I feel like I can. I guess I'm not very confident. Um. In this example, the client does not make clear connections between ideas. They begin with saying that their mother was always a little weird or strange. Then they describe a memory of their mother being in the kitchen and mention a glass vase which seems unconnected. And then mention they would like to get a car which is completely unconnected. There's a brief mention about how it would help them attend counseling sessions and there's a vague connection there. And then they speak about how they have difficulties with expressing their lack of self-confidence. This client's connections are tenuous at best, and often there, are, there is no connection made between content. Flight of ideas um, is best described as this, uh, these spontaneous uh, thoughts or ideas generated without obvious connection. And so in comparison with loose associations, where there is connections but it leads away from the central idea, in flight of ideas those connections are very tenuous or they don't exist at all. It's now time for some guided practice. Let's look at form of thought and practice together. In the ensuing video case study, you are going to code affect and mood and form of thought. Here comes the first case study. So I guess I should tell you about how I got fired last week. Um, I went into work on Monday as usual. Um, and I sit with my friend Luann, and um, usually on Monday I bring Starbucks. So, you know, like I had, you know, like my normal size, like hot chocolate, you know, like whatever size it is. And, and I got her a caramel macchiato, and she likes the venti size, which, you know, kind of sketches me out because it's got like a lot of sugar in it. Um, and, you know, this one time I was in Starbucks. Um, when I was ordering it and like there was this like dude behind me in line and he was like you know you shouldn't get that size because I used to drink those every day and then I developed diabetes 
um, because you know like there's like totally a lot of sugar in those um, and you know like diabetes is like pretty serious stuff I mean like you can end up like having to have your like feet amputated and all this and um, you know just having like all these like crazy health problems and you know like um, but then like my husband's got this friend who like his son has diabetes and you know it's like really expensive too like they have to like drive like hours to the hospital and all this but you know they do get to like write off all those expenses on their taxes um, you know which which could be really helpful I wish I had more stuff I could write off on my taxes um, you know like they just like screw me every year and I just end up having to like to pay all this money I mean you know it's just like such crap how like you know like the government just keeps like taking my money you know like if if you know if I got like a refund this year I would totally be going to Europe probably Paris because um, you know it's just like romantic and stuff and I've never been to the Eiffel Tower um, and you know there's some like really cool stories about the Eiffel Tower too pause the video now and assess the client for affect and mood and form of thought Let's look at the client's affect first. The client here appears to have a full or broad affect. They don't seem restricted in any way. They don't seem to have a blunted or flat affect. When talking about how they got fired or even um, how you can have things amputated, your feet amputated um, for having diabetes, the client has this look of disgust on her face. When she says diabetes is serious stuff, she also seems concerned. And so her affect would be full or broad since it mirrors her internal emotional state. Uh, her affect is also congruent for that reason. She seems disgusted when talking about her feet being amputated. She seems concerned when saying diabetes is serious stuff. Her mood is dysphoric because she talks about her uh, for example, how they she gets screwed every year in her taxes, how, and how that's such a bunch of crap. There's an irritable dimension there that's that's uh, so a type of dysphoria. Her, in terms of her thought process, she makes loose associations. She begins with talking about losing her job, and then how she often with her friend Luann goes into Starbucks and then mentions meeting a man in Starbucks who developed diabetes and then uh, talks about diabetes for a while and then how they can uh, the, her friend can write off um, their the medications for diabetes on their taxes and then how she, if she got a tax refund she would go to Paris Obviously, those links are fairly tenuous, but they are linked, nevertheless. Um, and so this is an example of rabbit holing known as loose associations. Let's look at the next example. I'll tell you why I get so angry at my neighbor. If I tell you where I live, it might make some sense. I live in a huge apartment complex. There are so many people. There are old people, pe families with children. There are a lot of dogs running around. But it's and the gardener mows the lawn and it makes noise. But it, other than that, it's it's really quiet. Other than the noise and and the loud neighbor. Pause the video now and assess the client for affect and mood and form of thought. Okay, let's look at affect first. In this example, the client's affect is blunted or flat. If you replayed the video without the, the sound playing, it would be very hard to, um, to assess the client's internal emotional state. It's not fully observable because the client has a blunted or flat affect. In terms of her mood, she has a, again a dysphoric mood. 
she seems irritable she talks about some frustration at her neighbor and at how he, how loud her neighbor is and her thought process is circumstantial she gets to the central idea or the point eventually after describing the apartment complex and the central idea is that she lives with a loud neighbor but she does take a dig digression to get there it's now time to look at attention and speed of thought attention has three elements distractible preoccupied and rumination speed of thought has two elements latent thought and racing thoughts distractible is described as when focus shifts quickly onto the external environment this awareness interrupts the present dialogue this is an associated symptom of anxiety and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or ADHD let's look at an example I was talking to my dad last night and we of course we got into it he just you know it's the same old stuff he just totally doesn't support what I want to do with my life I mean I just I just totally feel like you know college isn't for me and I'm not gonna be really successful there so why bother oh my gosh it's really raining out there I'm not sure if I have an umbrella in my car Ugh. So anyway, um... in this example, the client begins with talking about an argument with her father and becomes distracted by the rain outside. And that shifting of attention to the external environment is an example of distractible attention. Preoccupied attention is described as being inattentive to the external environment being internally focused and seeming to think deeply. This can be associated with depression, psychosis found in schizophrenia, for example, and schizoid personality. Let's watch an example. So you were talking about some problems you've been having with your mother? Hmm. What, what did you say? You were talking about your mother? Oh, oh, well, yeah. Been having some problems, I guess? Mm hmm. Here, the client seems lost in thought. The interviewer tries to ask questions to bring the client into conversation. But the client just responds minimally, just kind of acknowledges and continues to be immersed in thought. And that degree of inattention to the external environment, uh, com in combination with being very internally focused, is an example of preoccupied attention. Rumination is described as a preoccupation with a single idea or theme. This is associated with anxiety, obsessive compulsive disorder, and can lead to delusional thoughts. In autism, this is known as perseveration. So, I, you know, really been waiting to hear from my daughter. I haven't heard from her in over a year. And, uh, you know, I really miss her. So how was the, the rest of your week outside of that? Uh, you know, it went pretty well. But, you know, I really have been thinking a lot about my daughter and I'm really missing her a lot and I sure wish she would call me. Yeah, I know that bothers you a lot. You've been talking also about some stress at your work. Yeah, work's been a little tough. Uh, there's been some things that have come up, but you know, I really, I, I just really wish I could talk to my daughter. I haven't heard from her for such a long time and I really miss her. This client seems to really miss their daughter and any attempts by the interviewer to move the conversation to what happened this week or to work stress are quickly brought back by the client to the topic again of missing his daughter. This preoccupation with a single idea or theme 
is an example of rumination. In autism, by the way, when a client is preoccupied, often their topic of preoccupation is a preferred uh, idea or theme or character, such as a cartoon character. And so the client will continue to talk about that preferred object or item or character um, versus talking about uh, or, or maintaining another conversation topic. Latent speed of thought is described as a prolonged period of time between a thought and its verbal expression. This is associated with depression, anxiety, and schizophrenia. So how was your date last night? It was okay, I guess. And where did you go? We went, um, we went to the Mexican restaurant close to home. What was the name of the restaurant? Mm, it was some tequila name. This client has long pauses between when the interviewer asks a question and when the client responds to the question. And those long pauses are examples of a latent speed of thought. Racing thoughts are described as multiple thoughts occurring in a seamless fashion. <clears throat> These often occur in list form. These thoughts have a pressured quality and are associated with anxiety and manic states found in bipolar disorder. You know, I've, I've been having kind of kind of some trouble sleeping lately with just these thoughts that just run and cycle through my brain, and it's just really hard to relax. You know, I'll think about um, stuff like, you know, what if, what if I, what if I screw up at work and I lose my job, and then how am I going to pay for my house? And what if it goes into foreclosure? And you know, I'm just like really worried about my cat. She's been like puking up all these hairballs and I don't know if I should take her to the vet or maybe I need to be like brushing her teeth more or something. And, you know, and then just thinking about like this big project I have to do and, um, you know, and, and just, you know, it's, it's to do with like the war in Syria and like providing like aid. And I just keep thinking about all the things that are happening there and it just, like, I just can't shut it off. When the client talks about thoughts cycling through her brain, she almost gives it away. Racing thoughts are often intrusive thoughts that continue, can, can, can kind of perpetuate themselves. They're difficult um, to distract from. The client also provides a list of thoughts that have been cycling through her brain. She mentions worries about foreclosure of her house, her cat puking up hairballs, a big project that's due, and the war in Syria, and says that she can't shut these thoughts off. As an aside, in my clinical experience, racing thoughts often occur at bedtime. It's now time for guided practice for attention and speed of thought. In the first guided practice video and the subsequent, you're going to code affect, mood, and form of thought in addition to either attention or speed of thought. Here's the first guided practice video. So, you know, th this has just been a bad week overall. I mean, to top it off, Friday was Valentine's Day and it, you know, like, I just still can't believe, you know, it's, it's been a year since John broke up with me on Valentine's Day, and it just, it just ruined my day, because that was just all I could think about. I mean, it just still makes me so angry. <sighs> you said it had been a bad week? Yeah, I mean, just, it was just one of those weeks, you just can't wait for it to get over, you know, things kept going wrong at work. You know, I like misplaced this important file and just totally got like reamed out by the boss and then my car broke down. And then this crap with John. I mean, who breaks 
breaks up with somebody on Valentine's Day. I mean, we had been dating for two and a half years. I mean, I was expecting a ring, and here he is, oh, we're going to break up on Valentine's Day. I mean, it's just, ugh, ugh. Pause the video now and assess the client for affect, mood, form of thought, attention, and speed of thought. Okay, let's review affect first. This client has a full and congruent affect. They're obviously dysphoric or irritable. In addition, in terms of thought process or form of thought, they uh, seem to have some a tangential form of thought. There's some rumination about this breakup with John. Um, and by the way, she gives us a clue when, when the client says that it was quote, all I could think about when referring to her breakup with John. And finally, when she describes the stress that she's been under in the past week, she provides a running list of stresses that she's had to go through, such as, for example, being reamed out by her boss at work. And this is an example of racing thoughts. And so we have both tangential, uh, tangential form of thought and rumination in terms of attention, and also we have some racing thoughts in terms of speed of thought. Let's look at the next example. I got this exam coming up, and it's the last exam of the year, and I really need to do well on it. I've been looking at all the different things I need to do well for the exam, but I can't keep track of it all. I got to, you know, they're like essay questions, and they're multiple choice questions, and then after the multiple choice questions, there's this big, long written thing. It's like two pages or something like that. I don't know if I can do that. I've never been able to write that well. I was talking to the teacher about it, and she's not giving me any help. So I got no help, and I got this gigantic exam to do and a bunch of different things I don't know how to do. I don't know how I'm going to deal with it. I'm going to just drink lots of coffee and stay up all night and study, I guess. I don't know. Pause the video now and assess the client for affect, mood, form of thought, attention, and speed of thought. Okay, in terms of affect, the client has a full or broad affect. Um, this is apparent, for example, when they squint their eyes when talking about how they had this exam is going to, there's like two pages of essays. They do seem fairly anxious there. And when they talk about how they're not sure how they're going to handle it, um, their eyes grow wide and they mention going to stay up all night and drink a lot of coffee and do some review, I guess. And so that indicates a full or broad affect. They're fairly worried or anxious and indi indicative of a dysphoric mood in terms of their thought, their form of thought. It's fairly, they have a fairly logical form of thought. There's an obvious connection made between concepts. In terms of their attention, I didn't notice anything in particular. So you could code this unable to assess. And regarding speed of thought, there was an obvious racing thought uh, pr process going on here, whereby the client uh, relates in list form they're concerned about essay questions and multiple choice questions and then an essay and that the teacher's no help. And so that degree of anxiety um, and the, the list form indicates racing thoughts. So let's review. Today we learned about form of thought and we looked at logical, also known as coherent, circumstantial, tangential, loose associations, and flight of ideas. We also looked at attention, distractible, preoccupied, and rumination, and speed of thought, both latent and racing thoughts. And this concludes the second section of the mental status examination training.